Hey, I'm Bob and I like to make stuff. Today we're gonna turn this mess into this. Over the years, I've done a couple of different storage solutions for the back of my truck, and they've helped on and off, but I still have a huge mess. So today, we're gonna make a really simple project to make this a lot better, and the first thing we need to do is cut down some plywood. This portion of the video is sponsored by State Farm, which is awesome because I've personally been a State Farm customer for well over 10 years. State Farm's always been there when I've needed them, and the money that I've saved, thanks to their surprisingly great rates, has given me more money to put into the things that I care about, like tools, project cars, and lumber. And given the cost of lumber these days, that's pretty fantastic. State Farm knows that everybody has a budget, so they can help you personalize your policy to ensure your home and car and still have money left over to put into the things that you love, like building projects. For surprisingly great rates to fit any budget, like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Call or go to statefarm.com to get a quote today. And thanks again to State Farm for sponsoring that portion of the video. Now back to the project. So I haven't really told you what we're doing here, but basically when you open the window on the back of my vehicle, I wanna have a shelf there where you can easily put stuff in there and kind of keep it visible. But then when you pull the tailgate down, you've got a whole different set of storage underneath. So essentially we're gonna make this. It's a box, it's a shelf with some containers underneath it. And I'll show you those containers in just a second. All of these pieces are cut except for I have to add a dado in the side panels to make sure that that shelf can actually carry some weight. So let me get those dados cut in the side pieces and then I'll show you what's gonna go underneath the shelf. Those dados that I put in are to hold that top shelf, so this is the outer piece. This table's a little bit smaller than the whole thing, but I'll kind of give you an idea of what we're doing. This is gonna go on the outside. I've got some inexpensive ammo boxes that I can use to put different things in. I'll have like a first aid kit one, and then one for straps. Then we're gonna put a divider that's shorter than the outside wall. Then we're gonna have a big section in the middle with a big container, some empty space next to it, another divider, and a couple more ammo crates. And then the outside wall will just go over here. Now in between these dados and across the top of these dividers, that shelf piece will run across. Then we're gonna put a little lip around the entire top so that we can do something cool in that little space on top of the shelf. So first off, let's get some glue and screws on this thing and get it into shape. And for these dividers in here, I just made some really simple spacers. These are just off cuts. But I made sure that they are the right length so I can put one on the bottom and one on the top. So when I slide in the divider after I put glue on it, I can knock it into place and it's gonna be the same distance on the top and the bottom. And that makes sure that it's also 90 degrees from these other pieces. So now you can kind of see what I'm going for here. When the tailgate folds down, this side will be open and you can slide containers in, but this thing is not done yet. I've got this top section and I wanna make a drop-in mat that will actually fit in here that will be waterproof in case I spill something in this top section. I also have to paint the entire thing. I have to make the plywood a lot tougher on the outside, so we're gonna cover a lot of this with something else. We also have to attach this thing to the vehicle so it won't go flying around if there's ever a wreck. But before we do any of that stuff, we gotta paint it black. Paint it black. All right, it is painted. I hope you enjoyed our painting montage that we threw in there because it was so exciting. Just kidding. Anyway, at this point it is ready to be finished up and so one of the things that we're gonna add to it to kind of protect it is putting an aluminum cover on all of the exposed edges that are gonna take abuse. This tray is gonna have things dropped into it so this edge is gonna get hit a lot and as we slide things in and out of the front, those edges are gonna get hit. So we're gonna cover all those with pieces of aluminum. We've got a combination of C-channel, that's like this, it's gonna go around things. We've got some angle iron to fit in certain areas, and all of those pieces can be cut with any woodworking tools. We 
I'm trying to figure out exactly how to use the combination of the channel and the angle. And I think I'm actually just gonna wrap this around the bottom here. It doesn't really need to have it underneath, but it's easier than notching out around these things. So we're gonna have the angle here on the bottom and then the channel wrap around these parts where you see both sides. I think it'll end up looking pretty nice. Now rather than driving screws through all these, I think it'd just look cleaner if we use glue instead. So for these top pieces, because they're held down by gravity for now, I'm gonna use E6000. I think this is a great adhesive because it will connect pretty much anything to anything else. And in this case, gravity holding them down, it will give this plenty of time to dry because this does take about 24 hours to fully set up. The ones on the front, that would be a little bit harder, it would waste a lot of time. So we're gonna use hot glue for those, and then if they ever fall off, I'll come back and use E6000. But I wanted to explain why I'm using two different things on one project. I was just gluing this on with the hot glue, and I mentioned that I wasn't sure if it would stay, but I just put glue on these top two pieces, not on the sides, and I'm not gonna pinch it, but look at how strong this is. Picking up just by the aluminum, it lifted this entire thing. So I think that hot glue is gonna do just fine. These pieces went on pretty well, had a lot of little trimming to do to get everything to fit correctly, but it's on there, it's good. And one last thing I wanna to do to this is actually trying something I've never tried before. We're gonna make a tray that goes down in here so that we can set stuff in it, but if I were to spill anything, whatever that spill is would be contained in this area. So I'm gonna try something with neoprene and try to cut some pieces and glue them together. This is apparently a glue you can use with neoprene and rubber and latex. I've never done this, so we'll see if it works. I bought a roll of neoprene off of Amazon. Oh boy. This stuff, I don't think is gonna work. So we went to the fabric store and found some actual neoprene. So we're gonna cut down some pieces and try to glue this stuff up. Now this is some sort of crazy contact cement. I, I don't know how well it's gonna work, but it is very runny. So I'm gonna do my best just to put a little line on the two inside corners where it's gonna fold up and connect. But luckily it's black, so if it's messy, it doesn't really matter. This kind of works, but because of that curve, uh, it's actually not going all the way down into the corner, so it's sticking up proud, whereas if you push it down, it'll actually go down where it needs. So I may end up having to actually cut these corners out and glue them up just to get it to actually square off, or I could go around and trim off the top and just let it be a little bit loose inside there. I think for it to fit better, I'm gonna go ahead and make big cuts push it all the way down in there and then re-glue it. I decided to go ahead and pull these back apart. I was happy to see that this joint was actually pretty strong and I had to work a little bit to get it torn. So I think this is a pretty good method for doing this. I just don't like the construction. So now I'm gonna basically cut from this point to this point, get five individual pieces, set them in place and glue them into the shape that I want. I'm not gonna show you all that because it's more of the same, but I'll get that work done and then we'll go put this thing in the back of the truck. I did go ahead and make the other tray and it technically worked, but it didn't really work. Basically the neoprene is just too floppy. It doesn't have enough body to stand up uh, straight along these long walls. So I made it, but I'm not gonna use it. Instead, I went ahead and put in some marine vinyl in the bottom here. I just used uh, some spray adhesive to get this down. It's not gonna be waterproof, but it will be water resistant. So if I spill something, I can at least wipe it up. And I can always go back and caulk in these seams if I really wanted to try to keep any kind of liquids in that surface. So now it's pretty much done, but we have to make sure that it is secured down to the vehicle just in case we were to tumble. We don't want this thing rolling around inside the car. So what we're gonna do is use these hooks that are built into the floor of the car. There's one on each side. And so we're gonna put a washer back here and then a bolt that comes up through it so that when that's pushed down, we've got kind of a stud. That stud can go through a hole in the bottom of this piece and we'll put on another washer and a nut and it should be locked in place.
I got that thing bolted in place and it actually worked pretty well, except the nylon nuts that I was gonna use actually put too much friction on it and the bolt was spinning. So what I did instead was use a regular nut and I got it tightened on there and then I'm gonna come back with a second nut and tighten down on top of that one. When you put two nuts together on a threaded rod, it will lock in place and won't move. Otherwise, you could also use Loctite. This thing is now done, so let's get it loaded up. So this thing is complete and actually it turned out pretty awesome. It's very simple, there's not much to it, it's just a box, but uh, dressing it up a little bit to protect it and to just make it look better, it actually looks pretty cool and it totally does what it needed to do because this area is not a mess anymore. Now one thing I still have to do, and we'll do this on Instagram over the next week or so, is add some labels to these boxes so I know what's in them. That way I could send somebody to the vehicle to get recovery gear or first aid or whatever we have in these boxes long term. If this gave you an idea for something that you could make in your vehicle, I would absolutely love to hear about it down in the comments, so please let us know down there. We've got tons of other types of projects that you may wanna check out, and if you're not subscribed, be sure to do that as well. That's it for this one, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. I did make the other tray, and like technically it worked, but it didn't really work. Right. It Oh, farts. <laughs> Snatch block! <laughs> Dang. Oh, the fan exploded. Okay. Ready?